Let x1, x2, x3, and x4 be a random sample from a population with probability density function f of x defined on the support a is less than x is less than b. Find the probability density function of the second order statistic x sub 2. Well, the first thing to notice about the assumptions here is that we have a random sample, which means that these four values are mutually independent random variables. Those random variables are being drawn from a population with probability density function f of x. Well, the fact that it is a probability density function says that these four are continuous random variables and the support script A is the set of all x values between A and B. Finally, what we want is we want the probability density function of the second order statistic alone. Notice that this is not a particular population, continuous population, but rather it's any population. So the result that is going to be derived here would be fine for the exponential or the normal or the gamma or the uniform. Any of those would be fine for this particular result you're going to see. So the joint probability density function of x1, x2, x3, and x4, the four order statistics, from a previous result, that joint probability density function is n factorial, which is 4 factorial, times the product of the population probability density function evaluated at the four order statistics, and that's defined on the order statistics x1 through x4 in order being between a and b. So this time instead of the joint distribution what we want is we want the marginal distribution of x2 alone. Well the way you do that is you integrate out those variables you're not interested in which are x4, x3, and x1. Notice that when this is set up, of course, the 24 is a constant with respect to x4, x3, and x1, so it comes out front. In addition, f of x2 is constant with respect to x4, x3, and x1, so it comes out front, and that's why you have this term here. And the limits of integration on x4 run from x3 up to b. The limits of integration for x3 run from x2 up to b, and the limits of integration for x1 run from a up to x2. Leaving out the details when you work through the integral, you wind up with this expression right here defined between a and b, and that will be generalized on the next slide.